Hi everyone and hello pesky dames. And uh, just as an aside, right off the bat, I want to commend you on the beautiful irony of your channel name, which I assume you chose because it reflected uh, the idea that you gals have a, a certain amount of moxie and as we used to call it before it took on a different meaning, spunk. Right? Um, because uh, <laughs> this is uh, is totally and completely ironic in light of the wet blankets that you ladies have proven yourselves to be. Um, for everybody uh, who might be watching who isn't a pesky dame, uh, I just want to say I, I had sort of considered whether I should pull those mirrored videos that I put up um, this is just sort of a practical decision on my part because my channel now represents a significant portion of my income and if I lost that or my YouTube partnership that would be kind of a bad thing. Not disastrous, but bad. Um, lucky for me, I heard through the grapevine that privacy violations are apparently not something that's going to bring a channel down, um, at least not unless you are uh, persistent over a long period of time in them. Um, although perhaps harassment and or bullying claims might do that trick for the pesky games. So, um, but in my sort of pondering, I, I did a couple of things. I went and I looked at those uh, pesky dames, or maybe we could call them petulant damsels, Tumblr blog, and I read some of the tweets uh, they have embedded there and uh, some of their posts, uh, and you knew it had to be Tumblr, didn't you? Then I went and did a YouTube search of Pesky Dames and Mirror, and uh, I just found pages and pages of results. Pages and pages of, of, of users taking a stand against this bullshit. And, uh, and then I watched a couple of videos uh, that Snake Pliskinest put up yesterday, wherein even he, lazy bugger that he is, is prepared to take a stand, and that's pretty amazing since it would actually involve getting off his ass, uh, against those pesky dames bullying and harassment. And frankly, if all of those mirrors are what it took to finally get his heart to grow three sizes in a single day, I think it would be really, really horrible of me to take them down. So, the videos will stay up, and if they get taken down by YouTube, then they just get taken down. If that happens, I'm going to be altering them to comply with those pesky dames' bizarro interpretation of YouTube's privacy guidelines, and I'm almost positive they aren't going to like the result, at which point I might get flagged for bullying, but whatever. Anyway, so I was looking at their blog and their Twitter feed, and the combined arrogance and ignorance of these dames is just, like, astounding. Um, they've stated repeatedly and openly that not only do they intend to flag every mirror of these videos for privacy violations, uh, they intend to flag every channel involved for bullying and or harassment. Uh, the level of projection in this assertion just, like, stretches the bounds of credulity. Because, frankly, they are the ones engaging in bullying and harassment. I mean, let's all imagine a woman who wants to get rid of her husband. She just wants him out. So she falsely claims uh, to the police that he has been beating her. The police then come to arrest him and put him in jail. Now, if she herself or some accomplice of hers had slapped a pair of handcuffs on him and locked him in a room against his will... The law would have called that assault, kidnapping, unlawful restraint, and unlawful confinement. But when she fraudulently engages the legal system as her unwitting accomplice, uh, not only are her actions at one remove now from her initiation of aggression, the system itself has given her wrongful and criminal behavior kind of a fake patina of legitimacy. And that is entirely analogous uh, to what the pesky dames are exploiting and abusing YouTube's flagging system to do. So, in light of that, dames, I think we need to have a little talk. First thing, your tweets and posts on this situation repeatedly mention consent. 
you believe that these users, Chaswell the Mighty, Snake Pliskinist, Sparky Fister, Razorblade Candy, and others, are using your footage without your consent. Yeah, no. No, that's not how it works. You gave your consent to them when you agreed to YouTube's terms of service. The privacy guidelines and flagging system are there to protect, say, women from being filmed in the bathroom without their consent and having that footage uploaded to YouTube, or to protect people who are filmed picking their noses in public without their knowledge, or maybe to protect people who believe they're having a private conversation from being recorded and having that conversation made public, or to protect people from having their personal details, such as their names or where they live or their credit card numbers, disseminated to the public. What the guidelines are not there for is to protect idiots from having content they uploaded of their own will to YouTube for public consumption, used for the purposes of parody and criticism. In fact, by agreeing to YouTube's terms of service, you explicitly gave every other user permission to use your uploaded footage for exactly that. Now, I suppose given how obsessed feminists tend to be about rape and how much y'all like to harp about consent in that context, it should really come as no surprise to anyone that you would feel consent works just like that in this context. You know, that despite you having given consent, you can revoke it at any time, even retroactively if you feel violated or upset or if you find yourselves regretting having given that consent. But I would never have fucked that guy if I wasn't drunk, or if I'd known he wouldn't call me the next day, but I would never have put my face and voice to my opinions in a public venue if I'd known people would make fun of me. You think you can control every aspect of your interaction with YouTube and its community the way you can control every sexual act you will ever engage in, simply by saying, I do not consent to that. But I have news for you, dames. You did consent, and this isn't sex. We do not need your enthusiastic, sober, and ongoing consent to every escalation of this encounter, or to use the content you made publicly available on YouTube and which you consented to allow others to use the moment you clicked I agree at the bottom of YouTube's terms of service. Despite what you have repeatedly asserted, it is no longer your right to dictate who uses your content, how they use it, and for what purpose. Your pleasure or unhappiness or desire or embarrassment or regret regarding the things that you consented to in this context is immaterial. None of the videos in question are actually in violation of YouTube's terms of service, privacy guidelines, or community spirit. When you ladies agreed to the terms of service and then uploaded your videos to YouTube, you are giving permission to all other YouTubers to use that footage for criticism or parody. No additional information was added that violated your privacy. The only information in these flagged videos is information you yourselves made publicly available and agreed to allow others to use. And unless you've spent the last several years in solitary confinement or in a remote village in Nepal, you'd have to be aware that the format employed in these videos is a popular and long-standing tradition on YouTube. A lot of YouTubers who favor this format have featured some pretty messed up people and their footage, and a lot of those people get very pissed off. Yet oddly, none of those messed up, pissed off people saw this as a privacy violation. Probably because it isn't. And probably because even the craziest and most pissed off of them were more interested in engaging in debate, making counter-arguments, speaking their minds, or trying to express their point of view. Now, I'm assuming that you dames created a YouTube channel so that you could put your ideas out there. I'm assuming that by showing your faces in your videos and not disguising your voices, you know, like a lot of YouTubers do who actually care about their privacy, you're not ashamed to have your faces and voices attached to these ideas. You want people to hear your point of view, otherwise you wouldn't have a channel from which to express them. And you want people to see your faces and hear your voices while you express these ideas. Otherwise, you wouldn't have uploaded videos that connect your faces and your voices with them. And now, you want to control what other people have to say in return and how they go about saying it. You've blocked users who have respect respectfully criticized you in the comments of your videos, and now you've flagged videos critical of your ideas, engaging the system to do your bullying for you on the flimsiest of pretexts in order to revoke the consent you gave to others regarding criticism and parody. 
you are acting like spoiled children who've just realized life isn't easy as an adult, the rest of the world is not obligated to take you seriously, to respect you or your ideas, to keep its mouth shut about it, or to allow you to dictate all the terms of interaction. And like toddlers running to tattle on a kid you don't like, you appeal to the system to do the dirty work for you and silence your critics. And in light of one of Snake Pliskinist's latest critiques of those pesky dames, you pesky girls, I just want to say a couple more things to my viewers, to the internet in general, and to you dames. Because the video in question was a pointless rant about how trolling and internet harassment and threats and abuse are not okay, and they're being used to silence half the population. What about how women have always just had to suffer in silence about the abuse they receive online for the crime of sharing their thoughts and opinions? Dames, women do not have a monopoly on the whole people abuse and or threaten us to make us shut up thing. In fact, according to a recent survey of journalists in Sweden, men are more likely than women to receive derogatory or abusive feedback from readers and more likely to receive threats of violence and vandalism, whether in article comments or by email or telephone. Yeah, that's right. Men are more likely than women to be on the receiving end of all of that kind of bullshit. Who knew? Nobody. Because unlike women, men pretty much do just fucking quietly deal with it. In fact, journalist and conservative political commentator Michael Corrin of Sun News has even come out and said, that as a political journalist, if he's not getting hate mail and death threats, he's probably doing something wrong. And the astounding thing is that this particular one of you dames then goes on to, exp to, to complain about stereotypes of women as being too emotional, even hysterical, and not as tough as men. Even as she spent the first fucking half of her wine fest embodying every single one of those stereotypes. And she spends the entirety of her video treating the problem of bullying, harassment, threats, and trolling as if it's an issue that only women are victims of, a concerted effort, in her words, to silence half the population. Personifying to spectacular effect the stereotypical feminist who has her head so far up her own vagina, she can take a problem that affects men more than it does women and see nothing but misogyny. Here's some more news for you dames. Women are not the only people who are targeted by individuals looking to dox them or interfere in their lives. Several male associates of mine have had people drop their dox, been harassed and defamed in real life, lost their jobs as a result of that harassment, and have even had false, anonymous accusations leveled against them of criminal and terrorist activities. But I bet you don't want to hear about that since the people who did those things were feminists, right? And what I find most amusing, perhaps, in all of this is the fact that this particular pesky dame is complaining about text-based comments shouting her and her friends down. Comments which don't even appear in the comment threads of their videos because they moderate said comments. Comments that would not, in fact, prevent anyone from viewing said videos and forming their own opinions the way, oh, let's see if I might be able to think up an example. Oh yeah! The way scores of feminist protesters screaming and banging outside the doors of a lecture hall might disrupt an audience trying to listen to a live presentation. Or the way feminists pulling a fire alarm 20 minutes into said lecture might disrupt someone's ability to listen to a speaker and form an opinion. Or even the way a feminist repeatedly screaming, Would you shut the fuck up, fuck face? in someone's face might make reasonable dialogue impossible. Or maybe the way a bunch of fucking feminists flagging people's videos down makes it more difficult, in theory, if not in practice, for people to be exposed to other points of view. Or, oh my goodness, the way feminists flagging channels for non-existent bullying and harassment can be used to silence those whose channels are thre then threatened with deletion. Or is flagging down somehow meaningfully different, either practically or ethically, than shouting down? Because if so, you dames, you might want to explain it to me, because I'm not really seeing a whole lot of difference between, you know, one feminist shouting in someone's face so they can't get a word in edgewise and express their point of view, and another feminist abusing the system in order to duct tape someone's mouth shut. Anyway, 
Within hours, that video of snakes got flagged. Shocking, I know. So he did another. A video about derailing. It was hard to decide what was funnier, Snake's commentary or the dame's coked-up hamster furiously running itself to a myocardial infarction on its rickety little wheel. She claims that she has a right to feel however she wants about what another person said. And she does. She claims she has every right to call them on what, they, what it was that they said that offended and upset her. And she does. She claims that she has every right to express her upset. And she does. And she claims that her emotional reaction does not invalidate her opinion. And again, this is true. But that's the point where the self-awareness train got completely derailed. Quoting her, Derailing often occurs when a person who faces criticism over their actions or their statements needs a quick way out of the discussion before they're forced to examine their own mistakes and behavior. Funny thing, dames. This description could easily apply to your little flagging campaign, couldn't it? An attempt to derail a conversation because you don't want to examine your own positions or mistakes. An attempt to avoid others' attempts to address the things you've said that have evoked an emotional response in them. An attempt to deny others the right to call you on your bullshit. An attempt to make the debate all about the emotional reactions of others to the crap you said. Others who, for instance, might express those emotions through the use of all caps or cuss words. And then claiming that because disagreeing comments are emotionally charged, this invalidates the opinions expressed therein. Hmm? But here's the real gem. Quote, Thus shifting the blame away from them for being an oppressive wanker and over to you for being cross that they're an oppressive wanker. Dames, a few things. Speech is not oppression. Even speech you don't like. Not allowing others to speak is. You might be able to see that if you could look further than your own vaginas and think about maybe governments that are oppressive and governments that aren't. Under an oppressive regime, there are rules about what you are and are not allowed to say and what ideas are and are not allowed to be entertained, shared, or spoken. Criticism of the people in charge is not allowed. And when people do criticize those people, they're silenced, usually through some kind of institutionalized system of enforcement. You dames appear to be running your channel in just this way, setting comments to approval, not publishing those you disagree with or you find critical of your positions, and making heavy use of the block button so you don't have to endure exposure to ideas different from your own. And you're in the process of engaging an institutionalized system of enforcement to silence criticisms you can't directly control through your fascist little fiefdom of a channel. In a free society, people get to say what they want, even if they're full of bullshit, like you guys. Now, here's the thing. The gang here on YouTube who've been uploading critical videos containing your material have been a hell of a lot nicer to you than, say, Cases and Materials or K-Beach or Sal Polani have been to me. In fact, I kind of wish Cases and Materials video about me was still up so I could show you just what a really determined and malicious troll is capable of. And yet, when that video and K-Beaches got flagged down for bullying, I didn't do a fist pump or shout booyah. I made a point of asking the people subscribed to me to please never do that on my account because I don't approve of people being silenced, even when they have very unflattering and critical things to say about me. I've blocked fewer people in my year and a half on YouTube than you guys probably did between your first cup of coffee and your morning dump. The only comments I have ever deleted are those threatening violence against others. See, dames, that's the difference between being a child and being an adult. It involves not expecting the world, especially the internet, to be made as safe and padded and comfy as the nursery you girls apparently never left. This is the fucking internet. It can't be childproofed for you. You want to voice your opinions? Go ahead. 
but don't expect all the feedback to be positive or polite. Don't expect others to take kindly to being silenced. And please, 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 don't expect anyone to buy the bullshit that just because you feel afraid of the things people say to or about you, that your feelings have any correlation with your actual level of risk. Stop acting like toddlers. If you're not prepared to engage in a debate over your point of view, then at least learn to ignore the shit people say about the shit you say. Nobody's making you be quiet. Nobody's stopping you from saying what you want to say. And nobody's being an oppressive wanker but you. And if, as a result of this debacle, your channel goes down over your rampant abuse of YouTube's flagging system in your campaign to silence your critics, I might even make a video about how silencing you is wrong, too. See, dames? That's what big girl pants look like. Time to trade in those pull-ups for a pair of the real thing. Have a nice day.